whoever may happen to tune in today. Um, I think it's been said, by me anyway, that um, I can talk about just about anything. And I think today's topic will prove that. As you can see here, I got a, uh, an image of uh, a sign that's probably outside of parks as certified wildlife habitat. It's not, what we're, not really what we're going to talk about. I really don't know anything about them. But um, I got an email again from the city of Orlando that's always uh, trying to come up with interesting ways to um, justify their paychecks. So um, they wrote this email, and um, it's, it's a little newsletter, and it's divided up in different sections. Um, th this is somewhat harmless. I don't have a big problem with it, but it's not something that I would do, and it's not something that I think most people should do, and I'll explain why. But it says, build a National Wildlife Federation certified wildlife habitat like Bill Frederick Park. Now, by the time you uh, finish saying that out loud, you're probably already going to be too uh, tired to build anything. But let me, let me read off. Let me, that, that's just the headline. It says, we're proud that our Bill Frederick Park at Turkey Lake has been recognized as an official National Wildlife Federation certified wildlife habitat site for its commitment to protecting and nurturing wildlife. Your yard isn't 183 acres like the park, but you still can make a difference for wildlife like butterflies by creating a certified wildlife habitat site at your home. Um, and I'm not even going to read what it is again, it takes too long. But it says that that is a fun and easy way to make a difference for the local critters in your neighborhood. Every habitat built provides sources of food, water, and a home to raise young. Plus, the habitats use sustainability practices by incorporating native plants, conserving water, and not relying on pesticides. Okay. That is just insane what they're suggesting people do. Now, if you see this picture, that appears to, that, that sign appears to be outside a park. And what they're talking about was done at a park and they've received some type of national recognition for what they did. And that's fine. And yes, our homes are not 183 acres. A lot of us either are apartment dwellers or like me have a small home. All right. And we do have some grassy areas that are our own. They're not part, a part of the common area and we can work on them and do as we wish. All right. And let me tell you, I have no desire to do this. Okay. Why would I be in, think about what they're suggesting. They're telling you to have bugs invade your home. I mean, that's, there's a cause and effect to the things that we do. And while that, while the thought of seeing all these pretty little butterflies uh, fluttering around outside on your lawn uh, on the surface sounds nice, what we got to understand is the pretty little bugs, such as ladybugs, butterflies, maybe even caterpillars, those bugs serve as a source of food for some bugs that we probably don't want around. All right, so we're by have by inviting these insects that we like, we're likely inviting their predators who may not be bugs that we like to hover around the outside of our home. And it won't be long until they are uh, crawling into our houses. I'm just very sensitive to this sort of thing because this is where I live, okay? And I moved in here in the summer of 2016, I believe August to be exact. Um, I got a great deal on it uh, because it was a foreclosure. So it needed some TLC. There was no, no appliances. Most of the fixtures were gone. 
I, I had to buy all that stuff and move in. And when I first viewed this place, there was a lot of dead palmetto bugs, AKA cockroaches, dead laying around and some just running for their lives. And it gave me a really creepy feeling, but I didn't have much of a choice. I myself was getting foreclosed on and um, I needed somewhere else to go. And I didn't want to rent and I didn't want to crash out at somebody's house. So I was luckily, lucky to be able to get anything. And um, being the fact that I was being foreclosed, I really didn't think that I could finance anything. So I had, I had to be a cash buyer. So I was lucky, lucky to be able to buy this and I was not going to really um, turn it away over the fact that it didn't have some appliances or fixtures and that it had bugs because those were all problems easily remedied. It didn't have any serious issues such so as mold or a hole in the walls or anything like that. So um, cockroaches are, you know, they frighten me. I know it's just a bug but I find them so hideous, um, I just scream and run. I, I can't take being around them. In fact, when they die, um, growing up, you know, my mother would pick it up. I'd spray it, it would, you know, and my mother would come along, bring it up. It was dead there the night before. The next morning when I woke up, the roach was gone. Now that I live alone and mom isn't around to clean up, the, the dead insects, I gotta clean up myself. I actually used fast food cups. I saved them. I was like saving stacks of them when I first moved in here. And I'd take the lid, scoop them up, drop them to the toilet, flush it. That was the best way that I could get um, rid of it. But uh, I remember my first, one of my earliest experiences, like 10 and under, um, when I lived in New York, and they actually had a lot worse issues to deal with because there we had mice, we had the German cockroaches, the little ones that are carriers of filth. Now those things are really dirty. The palmetto bugs are just ugly. Um, they're not as full of diseases as the little German cockroaches are. Palmetto bugs are just driven by trees, and there's a lot of trees surrounding my property. So um, there was a lot of cockroaches here, and there were people living here that I think probably didn't care. Um, the place was probably unoccupied for a long time, um, so no one kept up with um, pest control. And I mean, from what I understand, there was even some squatters living here for a while. So when I first moved in, I started bombing, and um, I thought that would remedy the problem, and it didn't. And I bought more of these little plug-in, little doohickeys that you plug into the wall, and it sends out this you know, uh, signal, this tone that humans can't hear, but supposedly it drives rodents crazy and roaches and bugs and stuff like that. Um, and I started buying those in my first home here in Orlando, um, and I never saw roaches there. It was the most amazing thing because um, those years that I lived at the house that I got foreclosed on, I was a slob. I'll admit it, because I moved in there in... Um, January of 2007, and um, the mortgage payments were brutal, and I was in and out of jobs all the time and paying it out of my savings, and it just got to the point where I was like, look, I need a loan modification. I applied for it, never got it, um, and then I lost another job, and then I just told look, I'm not paying no more, so I thought I'd force their hand with a loan modification. didn't work, and in the end, um, I was better off because I was just so upside down in that property. It was worth a fraction of what I owed on it, you know, but I stopped. Um, I really didn't do much maintenance in it um, or, or, or home improvement in it because um, I couldn't afford to. All my money was going to the mortgage. Um, and then I stopped paying. Um, so I was always like fearful that, well, I'm not paying what if I end up losing this place? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sink all this money into fixing it up um, and then not get it back in the end. And uh, that was good thinking because I ended up being driven out. Um, I did save all the mortgage payments that I would have otherwise made and that's what allowed me to be able to buy a new home. I lived in that property without paying from like October of 2010 through July of 2016. So five and a half years or six years, really close to six years. And then the eviction actually came and it was 
that I wanted to avoid being actually evicted from the property, but that happened in August. Now, by then, I was already living here, so it wasn't a big deal. Uh, but I did still have some of my belongings there that I had to, like, get out of there. But anyway, it's really not so much about home improvement. It's about keeping the place clean. My point is, I didn't even keep the place really all that clean. Um, I, I'm embarrassed to say it, but I do go through these, these phases where um, I just don't feel good. Um, and the, the last thing on my mind is actual housekeeping. But anyway, despite all that, and I had mold growth and stuff, I seldom saw roaches, seldom. Here, I was keeping the place clean, and not just because of trying to keep the roaches away, but I was just happy. The place was mine. I didn't have to worry about paying the mortgage. Um, any extra money that I had, and I had money left over from my savings that I had saved just to buy a new home, I had money to actually do some home improvement. So um, I was really just trying to keep um, the place nice and tidy. It wasn't about keeping the roaches away. And the bombs wasn't doing it. Um, and then um, I actually paid somebody to come out here a couple of times and have the place treated uh, professionally and nothing worked. So um, I finally just started doing perimeter spraying, just going all around the house one week. Um, and then the, the, in the the alternate weeks, I would spray all around the inside of the house. And it started slowing down the number of roaches that were getting into my house. And I started seeing them so sporadically. And um, they, even when I did see them, they were dying um, or already dead. And now I hate to jinx myself, not on wood, but it's been maybe six months or longer since I've seen one. And now it's winter time, so uh, you know, everything's kind of uh, in hibernation. It's part of the reason why I love the, the winters. I love the cold because it kills everything or everything buries itself underground. What I am seeing a lot of are lizards and it's driving me crazy, but and even they come into my house sometimes, but not that often. Um, but uh, I remember one of my earliest experiences, I, was, I meant to tell you this earlier, I was like under 10 years old, and um, I'm walking through my house, no shoes and socks on. You can just imagine what I'm going to tell you. Anyway, um, I get to my final destination in my home, and I'm reading a piece of paper, and I have an itch, all right? So... It's odd for me to scratch without using my fingertips, but in this case, I was so enthralled in what I was reading. So what I did was, I stood up and I just scratched the back of my leg, um, or I scratched my I scratched the bottom of my foot. You probably can't see it, um, but I used the, the the bottom of my foot that I guess was itching, and I just rubbed it against. Um, my calf, and uh, when I looked down, I realized that I had crushed a cockroach, or as we call them up there, water bugs, or whatever it was, and it just had just smeared all the bottom of my foot, and I guess it was just creating some type of tingling sensation or something. Really sick. I had to like wash my feet and sleep with socks on that night. I was just so revolted. So. Um, the idea of me creating any type of habitat, no, okay, no. After what I've been through, I mean, there were there were times where I just stood in the middle of this room and just wanted to scream or maybe even did scream, do I have to burn the goddamn house down to get rid of the cockroaches? I mean, that's what I was asking myself. What is it going to take? I was at my wit's end. I can't live like that and I hope to never again. But there was a while where I was thinking, you know what, they win, they win, I, I gotta go. I just gotta start looking for a new place to live. But I'm kinda calm now, it seems like I got them licked. Um, I don't think I'll ever have them licked. I don't wanna lull myself to a full sense of security. Um, you know, they, they say that the cockroaches are gonna be around when we're gone, and I believe it. Um, they are just so prolific. I don't think there's any way to get rid of them. So, no, no. Don't like the idea of 
putting anything outside my house that's going to attract bugs. Um, and bugs that in turn will attract even more bugs that I don't want around. Um, I was having a conversation with my mother just today and she was telling me how she hates squirrels. You know, they are cute, they, they definitely are, but they're really just tree rats. They're no different than, than mice are, except they have a bushy tail and they're a little longer. You know, um, but they, they're, they are little rascals. They create havoc. Uh, my mom loves birds. She likes to attract the birds to her house, and she has bird feeders outside to feed the birds, and hopefully they'll come. And sometimes I look out her window, and I see the little hummingbird. Beautiful, really beautiful animals. Um, but the squirrels eat her bird seed, and it drives her nuts. And they actually make a big mess, and they dump it all on the floor. And she has them hanging from the side of the house, little bird feeders, to try to put it in a place where the squirrel has real difficulty getting at, and they still manage. They jump onto it, whatever. Um, I remember when we lived in South Florida, you know, my parents' house, we had mango trees, avocado trees, whatever. Um, my father used to shoot the squirrels, and it would make me so mad. Um, but my father loved avocados, and he liked mangoes as well. Who doesn't? Um, one of my favorite fruits. Very messy, but yummy. But the squirrels would eat them and knock them on the ground. And my, my mama saw me today, and your dad would just leave the, the fruit there on the ground, hoping that the squirrel would just keep helping itself to the same fruit. They don't even do that. They just, you know, I guess eat at it until it drops. And then they move on to another another fruit that's still hanging from the tree. So um, the more I can do to make um, life intolerable to any other life outside of my own, I'm, I'm all for it. I think I might have said I love cats. I really do. But I don't want them in my house. They are another uh, living, breathing thing that... Um, gets sick and carries its own diseases sometimes. It just, th that attracts bugs, you know. I try to keep everything as artificial as possible. I have artificial plants. I won't even have real plants in the house. Besides, I don't have a green thumb. They end up dying on me. So um, anyway, after listening to all of this, if you have any uh, little tidbits of advice on how you manage to uh, keep your homes um, insect free. I'd love to hear it. Outside of the cockroaches, I may occasionally see silverfish um, in this house. Uh, they're they're attracted to like moisture, as is the the um, the palmetto bugs. But I also sometimes, and I haven't seen them here in a long time either. Sometimes I see earwigs, and I've looked them up. They have like a little hook in the back of their body. It's really creepy. But they're they're supposedly harmless, and they don't crawl into your ears, despite what they're called. Um, that is said to be a uh, myth. So, um, yeah, I'd like to hear, and, and don't tell me to mix up this cocktail of things uh, because I don't like home remedies. Um, if it's too much trouble, I'm not going to do it. But I have found that spraying around the house and spraying inside the house every other week um, so that every week the place is being sprayed will keep the bugs out. I probably don't need to do it that often, but I don't want to find out what the minimum amount is. I, I don't care to know, because maybe I'll start getting too lackadaisy about it and not do it for a long time, and the bugs will start coming back, and I'll start freaking out. Don't want to do it. One of the thing, other thing I also do is I use different sprays. So once I finish up a gallon, I get another gallon of the cheap stuff, and it doesn't have to be expensive. It works. It's, you just got to keep at it. But um, that's my advice to you, but if you have a problem, but if you've also found something um, also works, um, if you have some other solutions, I'm happy to hear about it. I probably won't change the way I'm doing things. It seems to be working for me, but it is nice to have a little, um, little backup in my, my, my arsenal, you know, um, so that if I find they are becoming resistant to the poisons I'm using, I have um, another method of dealing with them. I remember not just a few, while I lived in this house, there was one in the shower. They probably come up through, through the drain, 
And um, I was seeing them a lot in my bedroom. I don't understand that. Why are they always in my bedroom where I sleep? I would turn off the lights and I'd be watching TV and the glow of the TV would be on the ceiling and I could see it walking over my bed. Is that freaky or what? I mean, you'd think they would be in the bathrooms or the kitchens. No, in my bedroom. Sometimes, yeah, in the bathrooms and kitchens as well. And this one that I saw in the bathroom, I pulled the shower curtain open. I, I used a see-through curtain because it lets more light in while I'm taking a shower. Saw a roach in there, went to spray it, and it started flying towards me. And I'm like going like this, backing out of the bathroom, I nearly fell on the bed. Um, it, it's a war. It's a war, and I intend to win. You know, sometimes I'm walking around the house, and actually, um, you're supposed to use a spray that's more of a mist outside and more of like a pointed mist when you're inside. So I have that mist and sometimes it just, the wind blows and backs up in my face. And I'm, I've been telling people, you know what? As long as I continue winning the, these battles with these roaches, I'm good. I may lose the war in the end. I may, the one, may be the one that ends up dead by uh, breathing in all these fumes. But um, as long as I can see them dying now, I'm happy. Uh, I'm, I'm really full of hate towards bugs. I'll admit it. So anyway, um, ran long on a subject that means absolutely nothing. Or maybe it does. Maybe it does. Maybe it means something to you. Um, I'm sure all of us have an insect, uh, a, a, a pest control story to tell. So anyway, um, when we meet again next time, hopefully I'll have something a little bit more uh, exciting to share with you. But that's all for today. I appreciate your time. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, and um, hopefully agree. See you again soon. We're done. I've had three friends so inspired by my ability to go from a foreclosure to a home paid in full that they have bought homes of their own. One of them a first-time buyer. But I still have a couple of other friends struggling to save for a home of their own while paying rents, which are incredibly high. What's their solution, I wonder? If you have an answer or have also been inspired, I'd like to hear from you.